Hello dear learners, today we will discuss the type of redox titrations, some methods like permangometry, dichromatry, serimetry and chromatometry in this part 1. The rest of the methods we will discuss in part 2. So first of all, what is redox titration and what are the types of redox titration? So redox titration basically we know that it is a oxidation reduction reaction. So in this type of titration what happened basically there will be a exchange or we can say the transfer of electrons in a reacting ions of aqueous solution. So this is a redox titration. Now we will see what are the type of redox titration and which titrant used for which method. This is very important. For example when we are using potassium permanganate as a titrant then our method of redox titration named permangometry. When there is a potassium dichromate, the method is dichromatry. When we can use when we are using iodine, the method is iodimetry. When we are using sodium thiosulfate as a titrant, the method is iodometry. When we are using cerium salt, the method is known as serimetry. When we are using bromine as a titrant, the method is known as bromatometry. And when it's a IO3 iodate, we can say the method is a iodatometry. So generally for redox titration, these methods are useful. So we will see one by one in detail. First of all, I will discuss the permanganometry. So what is permanganometry? Here there will be a potassium permanganate we are using as a titrant. So potassium permanganate means KMnO4 is properly the most widely used for all volumetric oxidizing agents. It itself oxidizing agent as in a previous lecture I have discussed already as a self indicator the example it's a KMnO4. So it is a powerful oxidant and readily available at a modest cost. The intense color of a permanganate ion because of the MnO4- minus is sufficient to detect the end point in a most titration. So depending upon the reaction conditions, permanganate ion is reduced to permanganase in 2 plus, 3 plus, 4 plus or 6 plus state. It depends on reaction conditions. Now in solutions there are 0.1 molar or greater than in a mineral assay the common reduction product is a manganese. So MnO4 minus plus if you are talking about this reaction if you are adding in acidic condition HH plus is there there will be a Mn plus 2. Here this will oxidize okay and it will produce a Mn plus 2 plus 4H2O. So this is the reaction how it will act. So the most widely used of permanganate reactions in solutions that are weakly acidic means above pH 4 it's a weak acid. Neutral or weakly alkaline manganese dioxide is the most common reduction product. We will get the reduction product like this when there is a MnO4 minus okay there is a when we are adding the H plus when we are adding 4H plus okay so this is our product of manganese. Now we will see in detail the titration in which manganese dioxide is the product suffer from disadvantage that the slightly soluble brown oxide obscures the endpoint. Time must be allowed for the solid to settle before an excess of permanganate can be detected. So some important volumetric analysis based on permanganate involved the reduction to manganese ion according to half reaction. Means over here we can see that there is a half reaction MnO4 minus plus only one electron there is a MnO4 2 minus. So, the stoichiometry tends to prominent the solution. 
greater than one molar in a sodium hydroxide. Now we will see the preparation and we can say standardization of potassium permanganate IP of a 0 0.02 molar. So the molecular formula is a KMnO4 as we know. The molecular weight is a 158.03 gram per mole. How we can prepare KMnO4? So to prepare KMnO4, we have to dissolve 3.2 gram of potassium permanganate in a 1000 ml of water. After that, we have to heat that solution on a water bath for an hour and we have to allow to stand it for 2 days. After that, we have to filter it and we will store it in a dark place. Okay, we have to protect this solution from light. Okay, from light we have to protect the solution. So, we have to store in a dark place. Now, for standardization, we have to pipe it out 25 ml of 0.1 normal oxalic acid solution. In that, we have to add 5 ml of acid. It is a concentrated sulfuric acid along with the side of the flask. Then, swirl the content. We have to slowly swirl the content. And we have to warm it up to 70 degrees centigrade. And after that, we have to titrate the warm solution against KMnO4. It is a potassium permanganate from the burette till the pink color persists for about 30 seconds. Okay, till that when we will get a pink color. Okay, till that we have to do titration. So, this is the reaction for in KMnO4. We have to add H2SO4. Okay, H2SO4 and this is our oxalic acid. So, in a product we will get the manganese sulfate, the potassium sulfate, carbon dioxide and there will be a 8H2O. So, this is how we can standardize the potassium permanganate. Now, we will see the other method is a dichrometry. So, as I said, what is dichrometry? Our titrant here is a potassium dichromate or we can say potassium dichromate KCR okay 2 potassium dichromate we can say the primary standard use here it's ammonium ion sulfate an indicator we can use in this method is a n phenyl anthralinic acid so what is the basic principle of potassium dichromate so, as an oxidant, dichromate has advantage over permanganate, but it is less powerful. So, it is used in much more limited, okay. It is obtainable in a state of high purity. This is the advantage and can be used as a primary standard solutions of dichromate in water at state identified. And the half reaction for dichromate is, here we can write, the CrO7, when we are adding H+, plus, it will give the Cr plus 3, clear, plus 7 H2O. Most important application of dichromate is in its reaction in which it is often preferred to permanganate. Here, CrO27, okay, plus 6 Fe+, plus, so we are getting Cr plus 3, Fe plus 3 and 2 H2O. This is our reaction of potassium dichromate. Now we will see what are the applications of potassium dichromate. Means we can say dichromatory reactions. So it will help to determine the ferric or ferrous ion. Okay. Generally the Fe in a sample of Fe wire. Then ferrous and ferric ion from the solution. We can also identify the ferric ion as a hematite in a formulations. We can determine the ferric ion, the percentage in a solution of ferric alum. So, these are the application of dichrometry titration. Now, we will see the third method is a serimetry. So, obviously, when there are a ceric salt as a titrant, we can say the method is a serimetry. So, here a titrant is ceric ammonium sulfate. Okay. So, ceric ammonium sulfate, when it is in H2SO4, we can say in an acidic medium. It can function as a strong oxidizing agent and it have a high oxidation potential. 
So when we will add sufficient H2SO4 and why we are adding H2SO4 because it will prevent the hydrolysis and precipitation of basic salt. So the ceric ammonium sulfate is a salt of suitable solubility for the precipitation of standard solution. Has an approximate formula is this with 2 H2O but the solution has to standardize against a solution of AS2O3. Since ceric ammonium sulfate is a strong oxidizing agent, we can determine various reducing substances by simple titration. In the presence of reducing agent, it undergoes the reaction like ceric sulfate plus 2 FeSO4, it will give the ceric sulfate plus ferric sulfate. So this is the reaction. Now we will see the standardization of 0.1 molar ceric ammonium, we can say ceric ammonium sulfate or salt. So first there is a preparation of 0.1 molar ceric ammonium sulfate. So how can we prepare this? So we have to dissolve 64 gram of ceric ammonium sulfate okay, by heating in a mixture of 30 ml of H2SO4. Then we have to add 500 ml of water. Then we have to cool the solution, filter the solution if it will be turbid. Okay, and dilute it with a thousand ml of water. Now the standardization of ceric ammonium sulfate. So for standardization of ceric ammonium sulfate, we have to weigh 0.2 gram of H2O3. It was previously dried at 105 degree centigrade for 1 hour. After that, we have to transfer it to 500 ml of conical flask. Wash down the inner wall of the flask with 25 ml of 8% weight by volume sodium hydroxide solution. 100 ml of water. After that, we have to mix the solution. Then, we have to add 30 ml of dilute sulfuric acid. Then, 0.15 ml of osmic acid. 0.1 ml of ferroin sulfate solution. After that, we have to titrate this solution with ceric ammonium sulfate 0.1 molar until the pink color means here in conical flask we will get a pink color after adding all this so it will change to a very pale blue color this will be our end point so this is the sedimentary method now we will see what is the equivalent factor so each ml of 0.1 molar ceric ammonium sulfate is equivalent to this much gram of H2O3 and how we can calculate it? So, when we, so if we want to find the molarity of solution, so what we can do it? Okay, this is our equation, the weight taken, okay, into expected M, then titration volume into IP factor, means the equivalent factor. This is the general calculation of titration. Now, we will discuss the next method. It's a bromatometry method. We can say here potassium bromate titration. The basic principle of bromatometry. It's a potassium bromate. Okay, bromate solution we have to use. So here we have to use KBr. It's a potassium bromate. We can say okay, KBRO3. It's a potassium bromate. So it is a powerful oxidizing agent which is reduced smoothly the bromine in presence of hydrochloric acid and which is taken oxidized to give free bromide, okay, free bromine by bromate. So here, this is the reaction. When bromate is react with the H+, it will give us the free bromine, okay, if it will react after that, this Br react with the BrO3, it will give, give us the bromine. So, the equivalent is therefore 1 by 6 moles. Okay, at the end point, the free bromine appears after titration. So, BrO3 minus plus 5Br plus 6H plus. Okay, we will get this. So, what happened? Here we are getting the free bromine as a end product. So, what are the applications of bromatometric titration? So, it will use for assay of isoniazide, used for determination of hydroxylamine 
and for determination of arsenic we can say. So thank you dear learners for watching the video. Now in the next video we will see the other remaining types of redox titrations.